as I was just going through the chapters here, I, um, just before the foreword, and the the post-human paradigm and then the alien threat. You have alien threat and then post-human paradigm. I've been in talks with Ali Siadatin. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's done a lot of work um, in the realms of UFO disclosure and the coming great deception. And uh, as the Bible describes it being like the days of Noah again. And I, I have to wonder, because we know the Nephilim were on the earth. It says they were on the earth in those days and then again after um, implying that they were on the earth before the flood and then after the flood. And then we see them called um, most commonly by the term Rephaim after the flood account. I think the last time they're called Nephilim is in Numbers 13, I believe. Um, but after all that, we, you know, we have the, the declaration that's going to be like the days of Noah. And uh, one of the things Ali talked about, and I, I haven't gotten to this this spot in your book yet. I don't believe you have, a, I haven't seen a lecture up on your YouTube channel that talks about this specifically, but Ali, one of the things that uh, he suggested was that you're, you're seeing a lot of you there. I mean, there's, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of abduction accountings going on and people describe and they draw out what they've seen and they describe being inside these rooms. And there are these tanks and tubes of these, these creatures that look, kind of human but not fully human like they're they're what you would sort of deem a great alien mixed with a human and over time they were getting closer and closer and closer to looking passably human and one of his suggestions was is that in this coming great deception like i i'm i'm on board with the idea that you're going to see essentially a contrived alien threat they're going to come here much like uh that marvel film where, where the gods come from space and say hey there's this much greater threat that's coming here let us help you um that same sort of thing i i do believe you're going to see that play out and it's going to unite the world and what will eventually you're gonna be like my book then because that's the uh that is my hypothesis in the book. Okay, okay. So we're we're synced up there, but it makes me wonder um, because, like, I do believe that you're going to see this conflict where they say, "Oh gosh, this greater threat's coming." Well, that's going to mm -hmm. be the Son of God coming in righteous uh, judgment to lay siege to the cities of men, and they're going to be making war on the Son of God Himself. Um, and so, a, a question arises for me because I don't think that there were just the Nephilim hybrids that existed. Like, you know, we see these, these smaller dwarfish creatures that you were talking about, the elongated skulls. And we have the account inside Leviticus 18, where God is telling his people, these are all the sexual things you are not to do whatsoever. Because of these, the land vomited out its former inhabitants. And inside there, one of them was bestiality. It makes me wonder what other sort of hybrids the watchers created. And well, that's, that's, and that's a valid um that's a valid speculation because of, we have fragments of the book of giants which was discovered among the dead sea scrolls and the book of giants is highly fragmented it's very difficult to it's very difficult to get any kind of um to, to read too much into it, let's say. We should not read too much into it because it's so highly fragmented is what I'm trying to say. Um, but among the fragments, you do get the sense that there was what they actually the translators call miscegenation happening in the antediluvian world. And miscegenation is the, is the mixing of species, the genetic mixing of species. Mm -hmm. um, and uh it, it it may be it, it could be that the watchers were were experimenting with modifying the life forms on earth hmm. and in fact i i i subscribe to that idea although it is it's very speculative because all we have are these little fragments from the book of giants that suggest it the, the book of enoch doesn't really suggest that on its own um you know, you have this terminology in the Book of Enoch and in the biblical narrative that they sinned against the 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 beasts, you know, the animals. And some people want to make that out to be some sort of a genetic thing. But I think that that simply means that they were eating the flesh of these animals, which was mm. there was a prohibition on that in the antediluvian world. So really, it, it really has to come from the Book of Giants and perhaps other extra biblical texts as well. Maybe some Second Temple thinking. Um this idea that not only did they procreate their own 
sons, and they certainly did that by copulating with human mm -hmm. women because the, 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 the first cause of the fall of the Watchers was sexual desire, was lust. Sure. And, you know, I highly doubt that that impulse was satisfied in a Petri dish. Um, <laughs> yeah. They wanted to have sexual intercourse with these women, and that's precisely what they did. And yeah. so they implanted their own seed. Um, they impregnated those women um, through the sexual act. So that's how the giants came about. But is it possible that they were, were genetically modifying other life forms? You're talking about... Um, you're talking about unfathomably intelligent extraterrestrial beings mm -hmm. who are much older than the human species and are clearly in possession of extraordinary technology. So if we can use CRISPR technology and, 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 and engage in genetic modification, then certainly they could. So I actually do believe that that was happening to some extent, um, that they were, uh, genetically modifying other life forms that doesn't mean that they were copulating uh with other life forms although i will say i will say that the book of giants does seem to indicate that mm -hmm. it doesn't directly because it's fragmented but it says that the watchers each chose different animals and for miscegenation for miscegenation is what it says so now do we think do, does that mean that they were copulating with these animals and maybe Maybe the nature of the watchers is such that they're compatible. They can they can produce offspring with whatever. Mm -hmm. I doubt it. I, I think we're probably looking at genetic modification. If that is in fact, if that did in fact happen, but but I don't know. Who knows? Um, so it, it is something to consider, certainly. Sure. It, it, and I guess the last final little little comment that I have. It makes me wonder what. Um, what a resurgence of Nephilim on the planet is going to look like if they're working so hard, if, you know, if we, if we have fallen well, angels that are working so hard to try and get them as close to looking like human passively as they can. Well, my question would be, first of all, because I see where you're going with this, A, you're assuming we're talking about fallen angels, and B, you're also making the assumption that, that, that their objective is to create Nephilim hybrids. Um, I don't necessarily dispute the first of those premises, namely that at, at the pinnacle of the hierarchy here in regard to the abduction phenomenon, you have the apostate sons of God, mm -hmm. the quote unquote fallen angels. Um, that is well within the realm of possibility. And, and, and I think that that may very well be the case. Okay. Sure. Um, but to assume that the objective is to create Nephilim, um, again, we would be using this very elastic definition of the term Nephilim to encompass alien-human hybrids, which I would not apply that term to, let's be specific, to, to the hybrids that are being uh, progenerated by the gray, specifically by the insectilins. I would say that that what we're looking at there is a phenomenon that is not directly related to Nephilim. Okay. That's something else that's happening. And again, because I would constrain the term Nephilim to uh, giants. the giants. Sure. The giants would you, I guess the watchers. Um, now, if we modify what you're saying, and we we can wonder, are the apostate sons of God involved? in the genetic hybridization That's of a, a non-human species with the human species for some nefarious purpose, then I am completely on board with you in that speculation. Yes, I would say, indeed, I would say that is actually out beyond speculation and that now we are in, now we are in the territory of solid fact. Sure. And that's, I think that's probably puts a, a, an even finer point on, on the way that I'm viewing it too. I think probably, like you said, a hybrid or a hybridization uh, is probably the better term for it. There's no need to apply the term Nephilim is what I'm trying to say to this scenario. That's fair. Um, I think that there are, 
it doesn't bother me if you do. I'm just saying from my perspective, there's no need to to apply that term as it pertains to alien abductions. There could be, you know, the I always make this analogy. It's we 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 for some reason Christians feel like they are constrained to that they are limited, let's say. No, that's not even the right word. Constrained is the better word. That they are constrained within these very tight parameters when trying to describe things that are going around that are going on around them in the world, and and within these tight parameters are, are only a handful of terms. Mm-hmm. You have angel, fallen angel is not a biblical term, but you have angel, you have sons of God, you have um, you have. Um, the devil and his angels, or you'd have you would have apostate faithful faithful sons of God and apostate sons of God. You have human beings, you have demons, right? So it's like demon. these are it's like it's like trying to paint. Uh, it's 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 trying to paint an elaborate picture with with three markers with three colors with only three colors, and it's it's clumsy analogy, but but it I think it. It conveys my point. We are we we are not uh, actually uh, constrained um, to uh, just a handful of terms to describe everything that's happening in the mm-hmm. universe and or characters. You know, there are certainly many things going on that we know nothing about, and we're yeah. not told anything about. You know, there could be all constellation of characters out there being species that we know nothing about just because we're not informed of these things does not mean that they don't exist sure and so i would caution people from taking those few terms that we have and and blanketly applying them to everything that's happening um, because we're going to lose resolution doing that and i'm yes. interested in a high resolution analysis based on facts now i'm not saying that the nephilim hypothesis of alien abduction is completely um, unvalid or invalid, I would say that it's unnecessary and and seems to me an attempt to describe the phenomenon in biblical terms. Now, there's there's biblical concepts and then there's biblical terms, right? And you can have, you can describe everything with biblical concepts, but you can't describe everything with biblical terms. Correct. And that that is obviously apparent, you know, when you start to think about, you know, many things that we know now that we didn't know back uh, in the Iron Age. Yep. Well, and I and this this would be a, a great place for us to stop for the night. And I think that's it's why I really appreciate inside your book that you do a very um, dutiful job to vet the Book of Enoch right away in its historical significance but also the linguistic ability that it gives us because of its precise greek uh, writing and um, so to say folks all of what we're talking about tonight you're not to take any of this as the god's honest truth i encourage you to do like the bereans in Acts 17 11 and examine the scriptures daily to see if what you're being told is indeed so um i think Timothy and myself have been pretty pretty good to at least make mention of things that are speculative from us, things that we have a hunch on. Um, but again, take this all with a a dose of scrutiny and get into the word. Get into some of the the apocrypha. Get into some of the extra biblical texts and hunt the stuff down for yourself. You will be enriched for your toil, as God says. There is reward in all toil. 